TV. You might have even seen him on HGTV. Get your hands together for Mateen Stewart! I can tell all the black people are right there. Right there. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Kansas City? You guys don't know who I am? Have you guys ever seen me on TV? Yeah, right there. Right there I'm on TV. Right there. Right there. I, uh, I bought this just for you guys. I bought this outfit today just for you guys. Yeah, this is an authentic African outfit. Yeah, at least that's what the lady at Ross told me. Um, <laughs> Susan looked like she knew what she was talking about today. <laughs> I love to be here in Kansas City. I was just in Portland, Maine. I was just in Portland, Maine. Yeah, they told me there was no diversity in Portland, Maine, but they lied to me. I saw so many different kinds of white people. So many. Old school and new school and no school. It was so many. Maine is the least diverse state. Maine is 99% white. So for the first time in my life, I was part of the 1%. I was like, okay, I like this. Maine is short for mainly white. That is what I'm saying. <laughs> and as soon as I got there, the crime rate went up. It went up. Mostly because I started robbing people because they thought I was going to do it anyway. And I was like this, I'm safe. Look at these glasses. These are definitely, I know my father glasses. What are you thinking, man? Come on. I am safe, but I listen to the worst kind of music. I listen to like hardcore rap music. Like I shouldn't listen to rap music because I don't relate to rap music. Because rappers always talk about the things they had to do in their youth, like sell drugs and rob and steal. And then they talk about all the money they have now. Like I didn't have to struggle growing up and I don't have a lot of money now. The only thing I had to worry about in my childhood was what kind of Capri Sun my mom put in my lunchbox. That was it, you know? And Drake, he even wrote a whole song about this whole process of rags and riches. It's called Started From The Bottom. He's like, started from the bottom, now we're here. First off, Drake, you were on Degrassi, bro. That is the top. At least in Canada, come on. You didn't have to struggle. Your name is Aubrey, okay? No one with the name of Aubrey had to worry about anything growing up. So if I had to write a song about my life, it would go something like this, okay? Y'all ready? I done kept it real from the jump. My parents on their home, paid a mortgage every month, man. I was trying to get it on my own. Saving my allowance, playing Xbox all alone, and my uncle calling me like, where you at? Private schools and uniforms and stuff was kind of whack, man. I just think it's funny how it goes. Now my desk is in the cube. Happy hour with my bros! Cause I started in the middle, I'm still here. I took my ACT and I got a 33 Cause I started in the middle, I'm still here. That's my song, Kansas City! Yeah! I lied a little bit, I lied a little bit. I didn't get a 33, I got a 35. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I took my 35 to fam, you baby, HBCU, I saw y'all here. Yeah, some people are like, what is that? <laughs> I am from Detroit, Michigan. I was born and raised. Yeah. But I live in Los Angeles now. And so whenever I tell people I'm from Detroit and Los Angeles, they always say, congratulations, you made it out. I'm like, I didn't have to beat Thanos. I just took a plane, Delta. That's all I did. <laughs> I didn't have to team up to Avengers to save the world. Just took a plane, that's all I did. Detroit. Detroit is safer now, it's safer. I went back to Detroit and I noticed we have bike lanes. Bike lanes, yeah. Whenever you see bike lanes in the neighborhood, they ain't moving all the black people out. Uh, <laughs> but I was just in Detroit recently and I learned that they, Detroit has the most beauty and barbershops of anywhere in the world per capita. And they all have these crazy names, all right? And we're gonna play a game called Two Truths, One Lie. You guys are in college, you've played this game before. So I'm gonna give you these names. There are beauty and barbershops in Detroit, Michigan, okay? Two Truths, One Lie. Justin, you wanna play? All right, the first one is Curl Up and Die, okay? The second one is Hair Force One, okay? And the third one is We Be Cutting Hair and Stuff, okay? Justin, which one is fake? 
One, two, or three. One. Air Force One. Oh, curl up and die. Curl up and die. Give it up for him. Curl up and die. Give it up for him. Give it up for Justin. You're wrong. You're wrong, but give it up for him. They're all right, and that's why people think the church is a sad place. Curl up and die. Air Force One. And my personal favorite, we be cutting hair and stuff. We the letter B, cutting with a K, no chance the end. Hair, the letter N, stuff. What else? What else? What else, Justin? What's the stuff that they be cutting, Justin? I don't know. Is it laundry on your back? It's just some dude named Jerome dancing, yeah, so like, what's Jerome doing? Like, oh, he just cutting the rug, young blood. Like, oh, stop. That's the stuff. Jerome cutting the rug. Why didn't you say so? And the crazy thing about this place is someone gets that on their W-2 form. We be cutting hair and stuff. What else? That makes me mad, Justin. Because I used to be a teacher. Yeah, right on. Any education majors? Yeah, I used to be a kindergarten teacher, so it wasn't that hard. Um, <laughs> you ever taught, you ever been around a five-year-old? They say whatever comes to their mind. I walked into class on my first day, and they were like, Mr. Mateen has a chocolate face, a chocolate face, a chocolate face. Because I got my chocolate face. Where you hear that from? So to get back at them, I told them I had to drink coffee to keep my color. And they were like, really? That's all works? One girl was like, Mr. Mateen, my dad drinks coffee. I was like, he puts a lot of cream in it, doesn't he? She goes, yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> See, that's why I'm the teacher, Susan. <laughs> well, my biggest pet peeve is when the kids would tattletale on each other. I hated it. I hated it. And it was this one little boy. He was always like, Mr. Mateen, she's touching me. Mr. Mateen, she took my bag. Mr. Mateen, she took my bag. I'm like, shut up, man, shut up. <laughs> I snapped one day. I was like, don't you know that snitches get stitches? And I was like, oh man, I just told a five-year-old that stitches get stitches. I'm gonna get a phone call. <laughs> and I didn't get a phone call, Kansas City, but this kid's mom came in the next day and she was very upset. And she's like, Mr. Mateen, Johnny's been saying some very colorful language at home. And I know he got it here at school. And I was like, really? What did he say? She said he told his sister yesterday that stitches get stitches. I was like, wow. I've never heard a phrase that in my day in my life. I've never heard that phrase. I'm sorry. I don't know that vernacular. <laughs> I said, did he tell you where he got it from? And she goes, no, he wouldn't say. I just start singing, I believe that you did <laughs> Teach them well and let them lead the way. Thank, Thank you, my, my teacher. Be safe.